Let's do it. Cheese. Cheese. That's what we're going to call this section. That's what we're going to do. It. Cheese. So cheese and, cheese and wine pairing. Everybody wants to do cheese and wine, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like this all got started because you had a call for... I some... had a... I've got a client that is doing a digital baby shower across eight states. And um, we just had to, uh, you know, procure some cheese, uh, obviously some wine um, and some potato chips and some crackers and some local honey. And potato chips. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot going on. There was a lot of pieces. So, That's um, idea. where'd you get the potato chip idea? Uh, actually, I got that from you, Brian, oh, because we're, we're doing, um, uh, we're doing, we're starting off with a, a champagne toast and what goes better with champagne than fried potatoes. Fried so, potatoes. Anything fried really, because high acid yeah. and champagne works really well. Boom. All right. So, so they got some cheese, right? Yeah. So I had to hop on the phone with Afta over at Dom's Cheese, uh, which Shout is in out. Avon over on uh, West Main Street on Route 44. Um, also, Dom's Coffee, same place. Yeah. Um, and uh, she was super kind, uh, super awesome, really helpful, um, and helped us pick out some cheese for today. So thank you, Doctor, for the cheese. There we go. And uh, before we go on any further, if you kind of like the videos and whatnot, maybe click the like button down below. <laughs> that kind of helps our cause. So, all right, cool cheese. I just unwrapped the first one because we're going to move this along. But we have three wines, three cheeses, and we did a little research ahead of time yes. to kind of see. Well, we wanted to be able to talk smartly about the cheeses. But we also wanted to um, kind of figure out what might go with these. So we have we have three different cheeses from uh, three different kinds of milk. We have sheep, goat, and and cow milk. Okay. Cheeses here, and uh, I think we'll we'll just kind of go through the first one. So the first one is called Alp Blossom. 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 Where do you think it comes from? Uh, we are coming from. Uh, this to be Alp Blossom. Alp Blossom. Alps. Right. The Alps. <laughs> the Alps. And where are the Alps? In, uh, yeah. In Switzerland. Switzerland. And where else? Because uh, this one comes from a non-Swiss country. The, 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 there's there's a few countries that have the Alps in them. Where are we at? Uh, we're in Austria. Western Austria. Austria. So almost go. Switzerland. Oh, I was right with Austria. Okay. Yeah. All right. Confidence sounds confidence. There you go. Uh, and what's kind of cool about this is this is a cheese. Uh, so first of all, this is um, so uh, this is a, a cow's milk cheese. Right. Okay. So brown Swiss cows are what's used here, even though they're in Austria, they're still they got it. They yep. maintain their Swiss, Swiss. Uh, passports. Yeah. Uh, neutral. And uh, <laughs> uh, but the cheese is I can smell it from here. But what's really cool about this cheese is this is this is a small producer and what's going on there. So what he does is he, he makes his cheese, forms his mold, yep. and then basically coats the outside of the mold with alpine flora. Oh, right. Wow. Things like marjoram, lavender, uh, cornflower, uh, what else I wrote here? Marigold, chervil, lovage, and rose petals. So really aromatic. I mean, I can, I can yeah. smell it from here. No, so, so the combination of the cheese um, coming from, from you know a really small dairy, Handled carefully, right. aged for six months, picks up a lot of aromatic. But then you put all that, um, all those flowers and all those herbs on there. Yeah, man, it just kind of cranks a little bit. Um, and kind of doing some research with what to pair. There was a few things sort of thrown out there. Some options such as rieslings, uh, wheat beers, rosés, um, and this time of year because it's getting towards springtime, bock beers. You know, um, wheat, uh, southern Bavarian beers that are um, that are a little bit higher in alcohol and have. Uh, have, have a nice maltiness to them, yeah. uh, nice richness. So, but what we picked is actually a leftover from my my summer uh, stash from last summer. Um, the Syrah Sybil 2019 Rosé from Yves Coulion in the Rhone Valley. Thomas, do you remember sitting in a cafe in near Coroti having lunch? You remember the, the chartreuse dessert, right? Oh yeah, that was spectacular. Right. That you was that was that was after a decent amount of tasting, and then followed by even more tasting. Um, well, but the lunch was pretty cool. That lunch was awesome. Right. Do you yeah. know who was sitting at the table next to us? Uh, at the table next to us? No, I don't remember who it, it was. It was Eve Kulian. Was it actually? He was no there. way. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I might have pointed that out at the time. Yeah. Uh, I have pictures. I was right distracted with chartreuse. Chartreuse really. dessert. Yeah. Right. Um, so so. This is Eve's um, rosé, very pale, kind of like that light salmon color, yep. um, and uh, it's just, you know, I, I love this wine. I buy some every year, 
had a bottle or two left over from last summer, but, but like, what do you smell there? Like cantaloupe. Right. You know, and a little yeah. bit of red fruit. So yeah. there's, there's some like strawberries, raspberries, etc. So I, I like the delicacy of this and, and delicate high acid wines. We talked about this a second ago with, with the potato chip and the champagne thing. Acid cuts through fat. Um, what is cheese? Basically milk fat. Milk That's fat. been condensed and Delicious, fortified. delicious yep. milk fat. Aged, picks up, wow. Yeah. That is just crazy, aromatic. Wow, earthy, smells like a farm. Smells like a farm in like summertime. It's got flowers, herbs. A little earthiness though, that, that sort of lactic creaminess and then like just a nice kind of full body kind of quality. So the acid in the rosé, I'm hoping works with this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A little funky on the palate too. Yeah. Yeah. This is delicious. Wow, you get all the flowers. Mm -hmm. Lavender comes through a lot. All the, just kind of complements the cheese so well. Um, yeah, you got to drink because it makes it a little hard to chew. <laughs> <Talk and chew. laughs> so do you think the wine works or not? Because we had choices. I think the wine works. I think, uh, I think, you know what, tasting this, and this is, I think this is doing a great job. Uh, this is kind of, you know, it's bright. It's not the brightest, most acidic driven thing in the world. And I right. think um, a little bit more acidity uh, from this wine um, would probably work out with the cheese a little bit better. I think that Bach beer that you were talking about probably would do really, really, really well. Yeah, I um, think, I think quite honestly, in my opinion, this isn't the best combination simply no. because I think the cheese is so good and yeah. so flavorful, it kind of dominates the it rose. It dominates flavor. the rosé. Yeah. I think, uh, I think in this case, we, I, we, it might have been a little bit of, of a miss pick. Yeah. But, um, the wine's delicious, no question about that, just not holding up to this unbelievable cheese. The cheese no. has just got so much flavor, so much aromatics. All right, let's move on to the next cheese, one of my favorite categories of cheese in the world. This is called Euphoria, E-W-E-phoria, yep. and it comes from Holland. And do you know what kind of cheese this is? Uh, is this an aged cheese, Brian? Does it say well, cow cheese? cheese? Is, the cheese is aged, but okay. ew, you know what an ew is? Ew. No, I don't know what ew is. It's a sheep. It's oh, a there you go. So it's sheep cheese. It's a lady sheep. Rock and roll. Oh, yeah. lady sheep. Yeah. And so this comes from Holland, and the type of cheese is that they are... Uh, famous for our Gouda. You know what a Gouda is? You ever have a Gouda? It sounds Gouda. It does sound Gouda. <laughs> it's definitely Gouda. <laughs> I love Goudas because they, they age these cheeses. Sometimes you can get them on the younger side and sometimes you get them like really um, after, after you know, uh, a year or two of aging, they, they get really kind of like nice and hard and, and chewy. Yep. Um, almost, not quite like what you would expect from say, a, you know, an, an aged cheese from Italy, like a Parmesan or something, but pretty close to it. And this is their answer. And some of these these goudas are, I like to say, howda cheeses are, <laughs> excuse me, uh, are are just fantastic. And and I love to eat them. I buy them on a regular basis. And they get they get um, nutty. Yep. And and there's a little sweetness to them. Okay. And they just get so intense. And I can kind of smell it here. So you get the subtlety, um, definitely a little bit less aromatic driven than I think the the, the cow's milk cheese. Yep. Just from standing here, but a little harder, a little bit more dense. And what was the wine that we picked for this one? Uh, this is going to be our Bandel, correct? Or no, we're with, our Gower. Yeah, Gower. Rock and roll. So what's Gower? Where is Gower? Uh, Gower, we're in southeastern France. We're just south of Bordeaux. Um, we are focusing here on Malbec. Um, and this is practically where Malbec really started, right? Um, so uh, what you have here is Comblesir, uh made by uh, Julien Ilbert. Uh, he is kind of become a friend. Um, met him in New York back in like 2018 with our friend Mr. Mensch at uh, Racines. Um, so this is his Chateau wine. Um, this sits on, this is about a six hectare estate. Uh, this gets fermented in cement vats uh, and then aged in these massive, massive um, like very neutral oak breeks. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite wines right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this wine is delicious. Uh, we've had this on a number of vintages over the years. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I like about it is, you know, people like Malbec because it's sort of similar to Cabernet and Merlot, but it has a little different edge to it. There's typically a little bit more like blueberry, a little bit more sort of um, herbal kind of fruit. Right. Tannins are almost approaching what you might expect from Cabernet, mm -hmm. but not quite there. Um, here in Cahors, it's uh, it's in southwest France, like you said, near Bordeaux. It's a little farther inland than Bordeaux, so just a little bit warmer, but you still have 
sort of like the the cloud cover and yeah. whatnot that you're going to get being near the ocean or at least in close proximity to the ocean sometimes and so you get super bright dark fruit color yeah. tannins especially in Cahors, they're known for their tannins and, and flavor so all of that, a little bit fuller body red wine to go with our cheese. So, Max, did you, did you taste the cheese yet? I have not tasted the cheese yet. You can <laughs> find this wine um, at a wine store in West Hartford with a dog on it called the Wise Old Dog for 22 bucks, by the way. Just so you know. There you go. Um, so, I tasted the cheese. The cheese, to me, um, has everything that I look for from, from Gouda. It's, it's smooth. It's creamy. It's got this, this beautiful texture once you start getting into it. Um, but it's also firm, so you can have it easily with cheese and crackers. Um, you can, you can, I like to sometimes shave it. I do it over my eggs a little bit. It has a little extra flavor to it. Um, and just kind of has this sweetness to it, but also this little nuttiness. And I think actually this pairing, you can, you can make your own call, but I think this pairing actually works pretty well because you have some tannin. The tannin molecules in the wine are going to actually bond a little bit with the fat that's in the cheese. Yeah. Pull the fruit out of the wine. Yeah. And also pull a little bit of that sort of subtle. This works. Farmyard kind of flavor. Yeah, this one definitely works. Cheese. Yeah. Right. Rock and roll. I like that. I like this. This is great. I like the texture of that cheese so much. There's a tanginess. There's, it makes your mouth water and actually adds a little bit more acidity and freshness with the wine. Super pretty. All right. Why don't gonna... you tell them about the crackers today? The crackers? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give a shout out to Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> This is some of their best wheat crackers, uh, but just nice neutral crackers to go with it. All right, I've been looking at this thing and wondering what I'm going to do with this. This is like, I, I think I need to put surgical gloves on here. Um, so oh this boy. is the, uh, <laughs> Wow. I was afraid to open this because it just is going to dominate flavors and everything. Um, I'm glad we kept that sealed up till yeah. the last second. That's uh, <laughs> It's so much flavor. There's a lot going on there. So, so here, why don't you talk about the wine for a second and I'll give you up a couple portions. All right, so... Um, Still in uh, the south of France, we are now in Bandol. Uh, we are at Chateau Pipperdon. Um, so got their start in uh, the mid 70s. Uh, these guys are, I mean, Pipperdon's up there with, um, uh, you know, Tampier, Chateau Margaux. They're awesome. Um, mainly Mavedra is what they do. They are at the highest, highest, highest point um, in Bandol here. So what you have here is their, um, their, Restan, Restan case? Restan case, which is uh, the terraces, which are the terraces that they build into the side of these hills um, to help out with erosion and also, I believe, to maximize um, water absorption, which is what you want, especially in these like, right. really warm climate areas like Bandol. Um, so you have 70% 70, 70 Mavedra here, and I believe 30% Grenache? Or Grenache? Um, really delicious. This is going to be, you know, a bigger wine. This is not their high-end bottling of red wine, but it is really, really delicious and on the shelf for like 37 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, that area, this area that uh, the wines come from, Bandol, runs right down the Mediterranean. It's actually kind of an extension of the Alps. We've yeah. talked about the Alps before. So this is as it's sort as they as the hills sort of descend down into the Mediterranean. And yeah, those terraces are kind of cut into the hillside to, to take advantage of the slope and, and make it farmable um, so you can grow grapes there and use that land. Um, but also you get maximum exposure to sunshine and everything, which they don't really need a, they don't, they, don't, they have a lot of sunshine. So, Lots of sunshine. So you get dense, usually the wines from this area are going to have, you know, very ripe flavors, tannins and everything, but the grape varieties, um, using Mouvedre here, um, and, uh, and, uh, just produces beautiful, elegant, um, rosés and rich. reds. Yeah. yeah. And their rich. whites have been, um, finding out are actually really interesting. Lots of tropical fruit on their white wines. This is not the, um, before we get to the cheese, this is not the, this is not as like weighty and as heavy no. as I thought it was going to be. This is actually, this is actually like really elegant. Right. Um, and beautiful. I think part of that is you get some acidity, but you also get some tan. Now we all, we have had some cheese up until this point anyway, right. so we have a little bit of fat in our palate. Right. But we're going to go for a whole different experience here. I have a fat palate. You have a fat palate? I have a fat palate. Always. I, I wasn't going to say anything, but <laughs> I noticed your palate's been growing a little bit lately, Thomas. I've been working on my palate. <laughs> giving a lots of exercise lately. Trying to I think a lot of us have been giving our palates a lot of exercise exactly. lately. Yeah. All right. So, All right. Grab, so a, got grab, on here. grab a cracker. I think this is your vehicle for tasting. Mm, I like vehicles. Just, uh, just give that a little sniff. Wow, wow, wow. 
So I think this cheese, so this, this cheese comes from, it's called Coeur du Berry. Coeur means a heart. And it's actually shipped and shaped as a heart. So, but it is goat cheese. And it comes from a region uh, right in the smack middle of France. It's just south of the Loire River, near the village of Saint Valentine, or mm -hmm. Saint Valentine, Saint Valentine. And um, the folks in Saint Valentine have um, in, embraced the hallmark nature of the of the of the holiday, and People they've made it their Valentine, day. Valentine, well, Valentine's Day. Yeah. I mean, I so the cheeses come that. shaped yeah. in a little bit of a heart shape, and that's how they're sold. They come in these little boxes, wooden boxes. Um, to maintain that shape, but this is, starts out as a fresh goat cheese, and you can see um, down the middle, it's all just fresh goat cheese. But on the outside, it kind of looks like mold, but I think this is actually ash, um, and I think it's actually more of a fresh goat cheese, but designed to originally be sold with a little bit of an ash covering. You agree? Yeah. It smells a little funky, but it doesn't really smell. It looks like it might be blue cheese, but it's not. This is not what I was gonna. Make. This is not what I expected on the palate at all. Right. Well, so you got acid here. Yep. It's making my mouth water. Yeah. But there's a little bit of funkiness there. There is some funkiness, but there's some zippiness to this cheese as well. Right. Yeah. So this is um, this is a single producer. It's name. His name. Their name is P. Jacquin A. P. So they got the family involved. Um, but it's a it's a dairy started in 1947. So yep. like a lot of places coming out of World War II, mm -hmm. kind of rebuilding their, their farms and whatnot. And um, this is uh, this is delicious. Dude, this works. This, this also delicious. really works. Yeah. <clears throat> this is wonderful. I love it. So Loire, the, the Loire River, we were there also. Um, this is a, um, this is a region that, um, you know, is known for goats, goat cheese, the, the classic pairing is Sancerre and Chev, right. um, but this isn't that far away. But red wine is a little bit different. Of course, we can have red wine with fresh goat cheese, but right. often we're thinking Sauvignon Blancs, but I like this pairing. I think this works. This cheese um, is so funky. And I think the fact that um, this restaurant case, uh, the, it's not as big as we expected it to no. be. Um, and I think that's actually helping us out here because um, the kind of the lightness and that sweetness and the flavors that we're getting from the ash and the goat cheese, and it being kind of like on the lighter side, it's, it's all working out. So. All right, so three wines, three cheeses, all the crackers. We'll put all the links below for all the information, and, and I'll put in the description everything about the cheese. But I think um, the cheese with wine thing work because our first, oh, we, yeah, we were like, we were like, does does wine actually work with cheese? Does it work all the time? Is beer better? You know, well, um, there is a, there is a thought out there that that um, white wine actually works better than red. Okay. Beer definitely is one of those things you need to consider because it often will work better with cheese because of the flavor profiles, the nuttiness sometimes, and the graininess in the cheese. Uh, uh, the, the nuttiness in the cheese and the graininess in the beer often work well together. Um, a malty beer would have totally worked. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. This cheese is, I mean, these are all unbelievable. Amazing. This cheese, yeah. as soon as I unwrap it, you can just smell it. And not only could you just smell the funkiness of so aromatic. The, the, the actual yeah. cheese part, but then the herbs and everything around it are unbelievable. I can't wait to get back into that. Okay. And Afta, once again, from Dom's Cheese, go check her out over on West Main Street in Avon. Um, she knows what she's doing. She's yeah, awesome. Totally. Yeah. All right. Wine and cheese. We like it. Rock and roll. It was good. Yeah, I felt a I like lot it. better about that one. There you go. <laughs>